Hi, Best Buds. It's Kathy with Kathy's Garden, and I'm so happy that you've joined me today. Today, we're going to be using those beautiful vintage clusters that we made yesterday together. And I've made three pieces of ephemera already, and we're going to make two more together. But first, let's have our shout out to Lena, Willow, Patty, Doris, and Darlene. I appreciate each and every one of you. Let's take a closer look. So here is one that's placed on the flap of a book page pocket. So there's the pocket right there. And it, this is the flap, and it just comes down just like that. There's one here that I've decorated the flap of a bag using some flat lace and the cluster. And then you just open it up. And there is the bag right there, which you can put all kinds of things inside. So that's that look. And then I have one more here, and it's just an add-on journal. One that will just give you more writing space. Oh my goodness, I love each one of them. But we're going to make two more together. So let's begin. So let's bring in our clusters. So here are the clusters that I have left that what we left from what we made yesterday. Oh my goodness, I love each one of them. They're just scrumptious. So I thought what we could do first is make a tag, a basic tag. So I have a digital here. I have coffee dyed the back, but that's not going to really matter because I'm going to fold it in half. Someone's going to ask me what size this is. This is about five inches by seven and a half. And I'm going to fold it in half, just like this. Let's get this lined up here and give it a good crease. All right, and I want to use this side for my front. And then this back side you can journal on. So I'm going to cut it into a tag shape. So I'm simply going to get my larger scissors. Those are not my large ones. <laughs> They're over here in a drawer. Oh my goodness. <coughs> here we go. And do I want it? I want it to go this way. I want this part right down here at the bottom. It's heavier looking. So I'm simply going to trim it like this. Then I want to take this little piece, pop it up here in the corner, and use it as a template to trim the other side so it's somewhat um, close as the close angle as to the you know the other side and I'm going to be using my distress oxide frayed burlap I'm I have switched the ink color that I've been using lately and I'm really enjoying this frayed burlap and it's not quite as yellow or orangey as the vintage photo, and I really like it. So because this was printed on just copy weight paper, I'm going to glue these two together using my art glitter glue. So just adding my glue around like this, and then just filling in a little bit in the middle, and giving it close right here. Now I probably should grab some type of little card. What is this card? Here we go. And I need to wipe it off. Sorry guys. Wipe this off. And what that does is it just smooths out your glue so you're not having any bumps in there. Lumps and bumps of the glue. Now this is going to be the front. Now which one's going to be pretty on this one? I'm kind of thinking maybe the green one. There's this small green one. And there's this small green one. Oh, I kind of like that one on there. I think that one is going to be beautiful. Now, let me grab some sorry silk. And let me grab my hot glue gun. And we will finish decorating this one together. All right, so I have my sorry silk that I really think is going to blend nicely with my bow. 
and the Sari Silk is from Crimson Heart Studios, which I will link her Etsy shop down below. And I'm just going to round the corners of the <clears throat> bottom of my tag here. And then I'm going to use my punch, that's a ribbon punch right here. And I'm simply going to punch my hole about as little as I can judge. What's really nice about using these clusters is we're not going to have to decorate it a lot because our clusters are really our decoration. So I really enjoy using clusters in this way as a form of decorating your pieces. It makes your process go very quickly and actually it can make your your ephemera cohesive because they all can have similar things on the, not all of them, but quite a few of them, and then they it will be cohesive. Now I only just tied a simple little bow right there at the top. So now it looks just like that. That's really a very sweet tag. You could definitely still journal on the back of that. And let's just see where we want to position that. I'm thinking maybe about right here. I also think that it might need a little bit more of something. Let's see, maybe a little bit of lace. How about if we cut a little bit of lace here and just fray it and pop it down here at the bottom. I don't want to cover up um, all those beautiful flowers. It's not really white. It's more of this off-white color. And how about maybe one more piece right up here at the top. Oh, I think that will be perfect. So let's go ahead and let's glue this one right down here. So just looking to see, I think it goes this way. And I'm just gonna pop it down right here. And then this can go right here. And so that means this part, it can go about right there will be just fine. So I'm just going to add my glue and pop this on just like that. And then pop this right on top. Oh, that's going to be just perfect. I'm using hot glue because it's quick and easy and it's really great for making videos because I can just keep going and not have to wait for the glue to dry. Now wasn't that quick and easy and how cute is that, right? Now I'd like to make another piece. Actually, we're going to make two more. We're going to make an envelope and decorate the outside of the envelope. So I have a piece of coffee dyed copy paper and I've cut it to be eight and a half by eight and a half. You're going to need a square and you're going to need to mark the center of your square by simply taking your ruler and placing your ruler at the point and to the other point and taking your pencil and making a line and then taking your ruler and making it from point to point and then making a line. And where those lines intersect at that point, we're simply going to fold it and crease it. And then the opposite side and you're going to put tip to tip right here, point to point, crease it, and then we're going to pull it up. Now, when I pull it up, I'm going to place this point and this point on one of my lines, and then I'm going to pull this up, and I'm going to have it come up, this point right here, a half an inch on either side. So I'm using my grid marks so that I can not have a wonky envelope. And we can simply turn this down right here. We can turn it back on itself like that. So that's looking more like an envelope, isn't it? And I do need to erase the inside marks that I have made here. So erasing them. And then what I want to do is there is like a triangle shape. So I think I'm going to try to uh, show you by 
marking it here, which I'm going to mark with my my ink sponge anyway, because I love to mark the folds of my envelope. All right, so now I do believe you'll be able to see that little triangle right there. And that little triangle we're going to need to trim out. And I like to trim it out past the mark of the that we made with our ink. So you can actually see, still see the line where I made it. So I made this a little larger. And I'm going to do the exact same thing over here, cutting it a little larger than the mark, just like that. And then we're going to need to make a flap. So putting it back together and then turning it, lining the bottom onto a grid mark and trying to hold it steady. And then bending this just like we did the bottom. And I'm actually going to do the exact same half an inch. You can do less, you can do more, that's up to you. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing. It's going to have that same shape. And we're going to trim it out where the folds were. I'm going to trim those, that corner right on out. We're going to actually make a corner. That's what we're doing. We're making a corner. So now we have the shape of our envelope. Uh, like I said, I do like to ink up my folded area. Now I did ink up my piece of paper before I began. So now all I have to do is ink my folded areas. That's all I have to do now because I already went around the edge before I even started. All right, so if you don't ink, of course you don't need to do that part. I'm going to glue down this little flap right here. So you glue it down on itself like this. And then we're going to glue this up like that. So I'm simply going to use the bottom and I'm going to just add a little bit of glue on each side right till you get to that folded area and then simply fold it up, catching those two pieces that we pulled in. So now you have yourself a beautiful envelope and it wasn't hard at all, guys, and you don't need a special machine. So now we have our beautiful envelope and let's see. What can we do for the front? Let's bring all of these back in and let's see how can we decorate this. That's really pretty on there. I've got this one. That one's nice. Oops, looking to see which one I think I really like the best. We could also use it on the back instead of the front. It, you know, however you want to decorate is perfectly fine. You know what? I just looked at this one and I thought, well, the postage emblem is over here. But on this one, the postage emblem is up here. We could do something like this. It doesn't matter. <coughs> Either one. Sorry, guys. I still have... Oh, I like that one. I still have that cough. Last night, I had a coughing fit. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oh, that was something else. But anyway, enough of that. So what I want to do is I want to just decorate this up a little bit. I'm not sure. I think I want some more stamping. So I'm going to actually bring my big old basket here up. And I'm going to get this out. And I'm going to get my stays on out. And I'm actually going to get my swirly whirly stamp. At least that's what I call it and this and let's start with that and see what we can come up with here now I'm going to use my uh, swirly stamp now, I've had it for years you guys and I don't know where I got it from I don't even have a clue don't have a clue in the world and I don't know what it's called I'm one of those that oh, I don't save my packages I don't put them back in my packages I'm very bad about that um, when I start creating and I get going, I don't do all that stuff like you probably should. Put it all back together. I just keep crafting. And so thus, I don't really know where anything comes from. All right, maybe something like that. 
Ooh, that's pretty. Um, I'm thinking I want a little bit more right down here. And um, maybe here. And then I'm going to do a little bit on the back side as well. So maybe something like that. And it, you know, I like the fact that it's not perfect. It's not, um, the stamp is not perfect as far as, you know, catching all the, the shapes of the stamp. I like the fact that it's just getting a little bit of it. That's just something that <clears throat> I really enjoy. I enjoy it not being perfect. So if you, you know, have trouble getting things to be perfect, I kind of think it's prettier when it's not perfect. So now what I want to do is we chose peach. I really thought we were going to choose pink because uh, I have a pink one here. So let me see. These are the two pink ones. I really did think I was choosing pink. <laughs> oh, i got to wet that up right there, don't I, guys? Here we go. All right, let's look again and see. Since I already have this out, would pink work better? I'm just seeing what's happening here. Well, that's not bad. That looks pretty. All right, because I have my pink here, so I think it would be a little easier to maybe finish decorating this a little bit. Now, I think I want to bring in a little bit of net, so let me grab that real quick. All right, after standing up getting my net, which I have right here, I think I need a little bit of something else going on here. So I've grabbed my large script here and this is stamp abilities and it's the faded text background I do believe it is still offered and I'm going to ink this up right here so just getting this inked up and I think it'll be easier if I actually just do the whole thing, even though I'm going to cover it up. Oh yeah, I like that a lot better. I think it needed a little more going on. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, here, let me show you. Yeah, I like that a lot better. So I'm going to do the back as well. I'm going to pick it up so it doesn't make that noise on my glass. And just ink that up. I don't want this inside done too. And as you can see, I didn't re-ink it when I stamped it again. I just let it catch what was already on my ink pad, or my stamp pad, I should say. Oh yes. I like that so much better. Um, it's not really grungy looking, but it definitely has, I'm not sure what to say about it, but I just like it better. <laughs> I'm going to wipe this up. When I'm looking for my thing and I don't find it, let me wipe it up real quick, all this ink here. All right, I'm looking at the back here and what I want to do is place a little bit of this trim, but I want some net to be underneath it. Maybe something like this. And it's not straight. I put it at an angle. And I'm simply going to open up my envelope. And, well, I need a little bit more glue stick here. I need to add my glue right here on the edge. Like that, and then lay my net down. I'm going to turn it over and use my glass mat to help get it glued down. There we are. Now let's fold it. And I'm going to bring in my scissors, and I really want it kind of jaggedy. 
I don't want it nicely cut. I want it to be jaggedy. And I'm just going to cut this here like this. And then I'm going to cut this edge because it's hanging over my envelope. And I don't want it to do that. So now we've just got our net on here. And let's lay, do I want all of it to go all the way across? That's really, really sweet. I think I do. So I'm just going to trim it off right here. And once again, I'm going to take my glue and I'm going to go all the way down this side like that and lay my little appliques right on top like that. Oh my goodness how how sweet and adorable is that I love that I think that's very special let's turn it over and now with that net a little bit of net that I have left I would like to place that underneath my cluster maybe something like that and um, let's see here I want to incorporate these. Now, where do I want to put these? I don't want a lot of them on, but I do want I do want some of these on here. I'm not sure, but I do want that net on there. So I'm simply going to lift this up and kind of place it down like that. Turn it over. Once again, let my mat get it stuck down for me and finish it off down here like that. I'm loving how this is turning out. This is really, really sweet. Okay. Okay, so there we go. Now we need to trim. So I'm going to turn this over like this and simply trim it up close to our envelope. And once again, I'm not being um, particularly careful of how I get it trimmed. If it's a little over by a little bit, it's fine. I, I'm liking that look of it being rough and just kind of um, placed down haphazardly, I guess the word is. So if we place this here, I've got that white sorry silk that just um, was used to tie that pretty green sorry silk up. I'm thinking I want this. So what I want to do with this, right here is where the seam was, so I'm going to trim that off. And I don't think I want it that wide, so I'm going to make it thinner. I think that will rip. No, that's not the right way to go with that. So let's see here. Let's glue our cluster down. We're just going to lose, leave it whole. So let me glue this cluster down. Maybe something like that. Okay, so now it's glued. Now let's see, what do I want to do here? Instead of making it, I always tend to make my, well I have in the past, make my gathers, you know, straight. I'm thinking I want to just take it around just a little bit. So I'm just going to add a little bit of glue and then I'm just going to punch, uh, pinch, not punch, pinch right there. And I'm just going to add just a little bit right there. I think that looks good. I like, I'm liking that. And maybe, I don't know about adding any more. And I feel like maybe something over here, but do we want, we can do a, put, all right, let me grab my faux stamps. So hang on because I'm, I'm needing something right here and I'm not quite sure what that is. Here are my faux stamps from my porch prints and there are some pinky ones. I don't, just don't know exactly what I want here, but no, that definitely isn't it. Here's a black, no, that's dark blue. Is there a black one? Here's a black one. Maybe if I ink it up, I'll like it. Because right now, it's not doing it for me. 
let's see if just adding a little color okay yeah I do like that all right so let's go ahead and I need to color that head a little better I'm going to add a little bit darker color on it here and there and I'm going to switch to my art glitter glue I'm going to glue this down right at the corner like you put a stamp and then I want some of this I'm so glad I tied that green sorry with this I'm going to just add a little bit to start with I'm thinking I just want a little bit I don't think I want very much here I think I just want a touch of this on here yeah I'm gonna cut this off like that oh yeah I like that now I did say I wanted a little bit of this and maybe just a couple of them right down here at the bottom is all I'm going to need. Now I don't need to add any more bling because my cluster has all those pearls on it. I really love this. Oh my goodness. And then this is the back. But it's going to need something to go inside, don't you think? So what I have here is I have a digital from Roxy's Creation. I have a little, it's just a scrap piece of a book page. I thought putting that together right up there in the corner would be nice. Maybe on this corner. And I'm simply going to add my glue on the top instead of using a stapler. But if you like the staple look, go ahead and staple it. I've just glued mine. And I really wanted to see if we just have maybe another one of these that we can pop right on here just like that I think well that one's really pretty on there it's just that one right there there's this one um, there's a white one well, that one's pretty too I kind of like that white one all right, let's use the white one. And now, now I need to decide, do I want to make it so all of this can be lifted up and just glue the top part so you can lift it like this? Sure, why not? Instead of gluing the whole thing down, I'll just add a little bit right here. I'm going to pull it down so you can see the jaggedness of the coffee dye tracing paper there at the top. And so that's all glued down. Now we need to fold it to fit into our envelope. So, oh, it's going to be perfect. This envelope ends up being, what is that, five inches. So if I fold this at uh, even four and a half, and I'm just going to crease it right here like this, and then I'm going to even it up just a little bit. I crease it a little crooked because there's that cluster inside and then um, I have to take down the side here just a little bit right here like that and then up this part now <coughs> excuse me I could and which I will go ahead and I will ink all my folded areas I just think it really helps with that vintage feel if you ink up all your folded areas. Now, I'm not going to open it up and do that because, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. And then we'll just pop that in there just like that. So if you put this in your journal and you put it in a pocket or you clip it on with a paper clip and then you whoever gets to it they look at it and then they turn it over and oh my goodness it's so beautiful then they go to open it up what's inside here let's see what's inside and then we have this oh my goodness you talk about a lovely vintage feel to your uh, junk journal by adding a beautiful envelope like this you guys, I hope that you have enjoyed all the different ways in which you can use the clusters that we've been working on. 
If you've enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. I invite you to subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in my next video. I'll see you there, guys. Bye now.